All right, so my name is Cvetan Mikov, and I helped create the Hermes JavaScript engine at Meta. So I can tell that there are at least two, three users of Hermes in the audience. Uh, can you make some noise so I can hear you? I need the support. <laughs> We explored the Hermes engine at Netflix for a little bit. It was pretty exciting. We went with V8, but I'm still curious what it would have been like going with Hermes. Anyways. For two people, you guys are really loud, I have to say. <laughs> anyway, last time I was here, I was really pleasantly surprised by the reaction to my talk. After my talk, a couple of people approached me to tell me that the talk was very technical, but OK. <laughs> so let's hope we can live up to this standard once more. I like it. <laughs> I want to start by telling you a little story. This is the sad fable of John Native and his slow code. By the way, is anyone noticing the, back, the backdrop to this guy? It's like he's in a rave concert going on behind him. I feel like whatever's going on behind him, I can't tell if it's this part of the screen down here or if they just have the craziest background of all time. <laughs> DJ Hermes, I know, it looks wild back here. Joe was sad because he, had, he was having performance problems in his React Native app. <laughs> the startup was very fast because of We've Hermes. We've all had performance problems. But there was occasional UI stutter when scrolling very long lists, when using complex animations, or when computing crypto hashes, or mining a bit of Bitcoin in pure JavaScript. Problems that we all have had, obviously. Joe, who was a very... You know, making jokes at conferences is really hard. And I genuinely appreciate the attempt to get out there and to make it happen. Because you know what? Sometimes, no matter how hard you make a joke, people just aren't, they're just not, they're not joining in. And it's a little bit emotional, okay? Passionate programmer, very passionate. <laughs> tried and tried during a 50 hour coding marathon. He swore, he drank gallons of coffee. He profiled, he optimized his code, he rewrote it over and over. But ultimately, he was faced with the fundamental limit of interpreter performance. He could not make his JavaScript any faster. Uh, it was beyond his control. Deadly tired, with a crushed spirit, but boiling anger, poor Joe was considering making his final move of total desperation, trying to rewrite some of his code in C++. That's, but then, he wondered. What if I could leverage type information to generate efficient native code ahead of time? I would still be writing JavaScript, but I would be in control of performance, not the Hermes interpreter, which is actually great. But Let's go. I could optimize as much as I need. Could I do that? Joe wondered. And the answer to that is yes, yes, you can, Joe. You can do all of those things and more. You realize like, how much better things can get if you can just have type information, like what you can do in a programming language is vastly different when you can just, just have it in there. <laughs> As part of our cross-platform vision, uh, we really want to unleash JS developers like Joe and give them access to the unchecked power that native code has to offer. Optionally, if Joe really wanted, he can even carefully perform unsafe operations, potentially not only creating harmless, web JavaScript crashes, but also devastating native crashes, just as C++ developers regularly do. It's good times right And there. look at him. He's so happy. <laughs> he doesn't know what he's getting into. <laughs> but seriously, he will mostly get tons of performance. And on that highly optimistic note, I am excited to introduce the next version of Hermes, which we have been working on for some time now, codenamed Static Hermes. Some of you may have already heard some speculation about it on Twitter. Very excited. Uh, it was not meant to be a secret. It was on GitHub since day one. But we didn't really want to talk about it uh, because there was nothing to show. Well, now finally there is something to show, and we are eager to share it with you. The main innovation of Static Hermes, as you have guessed already, is optional ahead of time compilation of JavaScript to native code. This is just so cool. Like, I, I just. This is just my favorite, this is my favorite thing right here, right there. Do you see this thing that just goes on right here? This top line is so good. Like, um, at, like think about, think about like cold start times in Node. They, they, they're, they're slow, especially when you're running on a single thread, right? A lot of these, a lot of the, you know, a lot of these serverless things, it's not like they're giving them maximum resources. You're getting a shared resource. And whenever you start up Node, right? Like even if you just do the most world's most basic thing, if you just do a Node uh, 
trace GC uh, E console log uh, hello right. Oh, I didn't get anything. Oh, that's nice. Uh, but if you import anything, right? I mean, we're talking about like you barely import anything. You will just, you'll cause so many trace GCs. I thought you'd get a trace GC. This is a little disappointing. You didn't get a trace GC for this one. But you'll GC multiple times. And on these like single core little running ephemeral processes, it's a stop the world GC, right? It is a stop the world GC and it completely destroys stuff. And so I know it's very anticlimactic, you know, and so like you could, you could imagine how much you could potentially do by having your stuff compiled and more tight and being able to just have finer control over what's going on. I would love to see more of that. I know GC isn't, GC is going to be present in either of these, but it could be a vastly different type of performance and what goes on. Mm. Mm. I'd love it. It brings us close to our goal of combining the predictability and high performance of C with JavaScript usability. And no, despite what the last slide said, uh, natively compiled JS is completely safe by default, exactly as interpreted JS. So there will not be native crashes for Joe. Oh, well, that's cool. To be clear, uh, native compilation is not for your entire app, even though that is possible. You need to decide which parts of your code uh, need to be optimized to the max, and only they get compiled to native ahead of time. The rest continues to use Hermes bytecode. And if you want to learn Hermes by code, I recommend a great talk by Radic, React Native <laughs> 2023. <laughs> you will find it on YouTube in a couple of weeks. Now, the really big change here is that in order to... I wonder how true this is, C performance with JS usability. Like, what, what exactly are they saying? I, I don't know. I... I, I I would love to see some sort of like channel. I know strong sauce. I know whenever I see someone say C, like your biggest dead giveaway that people are saying something stupid is when they say it's faster than C. Then the next one is when they say it's a dynamic language that's as fast as C, or it's a bytecode language that's as fast as C. You're just like, well, you know, what you're saying is largely offensive. <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> I'm not going to believe you. <laughs> Sorry. Fully exploit native performance, static Hermes relies on sound types. Now, even if you don't know what sound types are, What's the last uh, remember these words, and we'll really delve into that a little bit deeper in a few slides. It I see someone say E, e equals M, uh, MC squared. So didn't, didn't someone tweet just recently E equals MC squared? plus AI, as if it was some sort of revolutionary thing. You think Twitch chat is dumb, okay? I just want you to remember this. If you think Twitch chat is dumb, go on Twitter. Whole new world out there, okay? Whole new, whole new world out there. At this point, I want to make a big disclaimer. Uh, we are seeing encouraging results from Static Hermes, uh, but it is still very much a work in progress. Okay, it's not ready. Right for, now, okay. it is not suitable for anyone besides the most extreme hackers and enthusiasts, like Radek. Uh, it is still not easy to use. Uh, many things are broken. If you tried it, which you can, because it is on GitHub, uh, you might get disappointed. Okay. But rest assured, we are working on it, and it is getting better all the time. Some of the Hermes team is here with me <laughs> in React Native U, and they are submitting diffs as we speak. So it is improving at this very second. Uh, with all that said, we really wanted to share it early with the React Native community and to get your feedback. We also want to thank our partner in this, Amazon. By the way, how, how different is React Native from React? Who here programs in both? Anybody? A anybody? Honestly, pretty different, very different. Me? Pretty different, okay. I only use Preact. Oh, okay, tough guy. 50% similar. <laughs> I mean, I'm like 97% similar to an ape, so 50% similar means nothing to me, okay? I don't even know what that means. I don't, I don't even know what that's supposed to mean at this point. 22% well, better? TypeScript nice. support to static Hermes, uh, because internally we added flow Ooh. support. Did I just, hold on, did I just uh, hear the word support. TypeScript support to static Hermes? We also want to thank our partner in this, Amazon. Shh for adding Check. TypeScript support to static Hermes, uh, because internally we 
added flow support. Uh, Amazon uses React Native in many of its apps, and it has been supporting us in growing React Native over the past few years. OK, so this is a brief overview of the topics that we'll cover in this presentation. Yeah, Amazon doing non-evil things. Okay, it's, it's weird. I, I, uh, OK, W on the board for Amazon. Flow, yep, vomit. I've never actually used Flow. I am curious about Flow. You know what I mean? I've never used Flow. Why would anyone use Flow? Has anyone used Flow? Flow's good. Flow's great. One W, a thousand L's. <laughs> flow is better. Flow has sound types. Oh, interesting. Flow has sound types. How does it do that? Does it have some sort of runtime component? Is that what it does? Because, like, how do you have a sound type? It has speakers. Oh, you're, t you're a funny guy, huh? You're a funny guy, aren't you? Okay, forget you guys. I you could guys talk are for hours about static Hermes, but I'll try to fit everything in the remaining. It has sound types. What are those and how does it have it? Ooh. So first, we'll start with explaining why it is difficult to compile JavaScript to native. Then we'll explain what sound typing is. And we'll look into an example of actual native compilation so you can get a feel for it. <laughs> Shut up! Finally, we'll talk about something that became possible with Static Hermes, and that is zero cost FFI. First, we'll look at an example which reads an SQLite database entirely in JavaScript without C or huh. C. Does Hermes have and does Hermes have its own runtime? Can you use can you use Hermes like Node? Yes, yes, no. <laughs> Sounds like it. Yes, no. What, why do I keep asking you guys things? Why do I keep asking you guys things? Okay, what, what is my problem? <laughs> wow, somehow this became less helpful. I will just have then to go we'll play with Hermes at some point. a little bit more detailed example of one simple native code, which is get env. 50% <laughs> likely. <laughs> First, let's, stage, uh, let's set the stage a little bit here. Why do we need static Hermes? Isn't regular Hermes good enough? Well, as an interpreter, Hermes is pretty good. And we actually do have plans to make it about twice faster, which is a topic for a whole another talk. But that's, ultimately, that's a lot faster. Uh, there is only so much performance that you can get from an interpreter. And that isn't always enough. One way for people to exceed that level of performance is to write extensions in C++, uh, just as poor Joe was going to. Yeah. That, however, can be quite difficult to write and to maintain. So instead, we want to take advantage of React Native developers' familiarity with typed JavaScript and compile typed JavaScript to native ahead of time. I know I'm repeating myself a little bit. You know this is about compilation to native. A valid question to ask here is, what makes compiling JS to native so difficult in the first place? Well, the answer is easy to see in the example like this one. Yeah. We have a function. It takes two parameters, but we don't know their types. So all possible types, string, array, number, regular expression, whatever, and combinations between them need to be supported. The result is that if you wanted to compile this to native, you either would get a binary explosion. You effectively get free generics. You get a generic... You get... <laughs> You get a generic of T and uh, of V and U, and you get both of them, and then they just explode to every type. That'd be fun, huh? That'd be kind of nice. All type combinations, or you would just get interpreter-like performance, which defeats the purpose of native compilation. Uh, there are interesting solutions in the academia that I would like to acknowledge, specifically the excellent HOPC compiler uh, by Manuel Serrano. But unfortunately, it doesn't really meet our needs since it compiles every function twice and relies on heuristics, so performance is not guaranteed mm. and predictable. We are not ruling it out, though, for the future. OK, then. We already said that we want to use type annotations. Can they help? Unfortunately, not by themselves. Because type annotations in TypeScript and Flow are unsound. The TypeScript community right now are in shambles. They're completely in shambles right now. It's not, it's type safe. Just shambled right now. Shook. There is that word again, sound, unsound. What does it mean? Unsound means that these type annotations cannot guarantee that the actual types at runtime are correct. 
but they are what we say here. <laughs> How so, you might ask? Well, here is a very simple example. We have this function annotated with number. We Imagine doing all this annotation just to not actually have types. <laughs> it with two array elements. Unfortunately, these array elements are out of range. So instead of calling the function with number and number, we're calling it with two values of undefined. So as you can see, we have broken the type checkers. It is true. TypeScript has only ever talked about a code organization. It has nothing to do with actual types. It's, it's supposed to be that it, it gives you the feeling of doing the right thing and likely cures most of your bugs. Uh, and and um, as I'm sure you know, there are many similar ways to break the type checkers. And this is not a bug in TypeScript or Flow. Uh, it is Correct. just that given JavaScript semantics, this problem cannot be solved statically at compile time. Correct. It is a very difficult problem. Here is how static Hermes addresses this problem in this specific example. On the left, we have regular Hermes executing this code. Oh, nice. You get actually like hard As we can see, it's calling it with wow. undefined plus undefined. On the right, we have static Hermes. Now, rather than call the function with undefined, it throws a range exception when we try to access there we elements go. that are not in range. Dude, welcome to Java 1.0. There you go. All you script kiddies. Have you ever heard of range errors? They're a lot of fun. They're a lot of fun, okay? So to Look recap, what a 1995 static <laughs> modifies some JavaScript semantics in order to enable efficient sound typing at runtime. In other words, at runtime, the types of values are guaranteed to match the type annotations, which in turn allows us to compile that source very efficiently. Uh, the new semantics are opt-in on a granular level, and you can use them only where you need them. Plus, the new code and How does that existing work? code can coexist in interop. And finally, as I mentioned, both TypeScript and Flow are supported. This is super curious to me because, I mean, you still can cheat at some point in TypeScript to convert an object to a number. And then how does this all, like, I, I, I wonder what but all wait, the errors are and what does that are look like? Are we breaking JavaScript? We can't arbitrarily change how the language works, can we? Well, consider this. We are simply enforcing the behavior that the user declared they wanted when they wrote the type annotation. When they wrote that x is of type number, they certainly did not intend for x to occasionally be of type undefined. That wouldn't make sense. So technically, the program we had there was incorrect. We just caught the bug at runtime instead of silently ignoring it. So we are strengthening the TypeScript and Flow type systems. By I wonder if the static generation, all this allows for something like uh, number or undefined and allows for like that more uh, like still loosey-goosey feeling of JavaScript while having still like this increased performance of pre-compilation. I'm very curious about that because that would be, you know, that would be dynamite, right? That would be a genuinely dynamite item. Yeah, a nullable. Effectively, you'd get a nullable. Uh, it would be pretty cool. Uh, so, uh, so if you use Hermes and you use protobufs instead of, uh, instead of JSON, you correctly organize, oh my goodness, all of your code into modules hierarchy and you don't spam anonymous bullshit functions all over the place, uh, then you can do basic modern programming in JS. Yes, you've now officially caught up again. 1995 was a hell of a year. It was a hell of a year for programming. Java came out. JavaScript came out. They announced together. Null was included in JavaScript because it needed to interop with Java. I mean, it was a good, it was a good year. It was a genuinely Forcing good year. Super information highway. We don't necessarily view that as breaking JavaScript. Uh, but regardless of these philosophical arguments, it is all opt-in. So if you don't like it, you don't have to use it. But if you do use it, it will make your code both faster and more correct. So we, we would like you to use it. I like this idea. We have talked a lot about this in theory now. So it's time to finally look at concrete examples. By the way, this is the most confusing meme still to my lifetime. I genuinely have no idea how to interpret this meme. It's just like you put the most confusing image of all time and you just put words on top of it and somehow it makes me chuckle. I don't even get it. It's Darth Vader caring about his water quality, obviously. I know, but it doesn't make any, I don't, I, I'm still, I still struggle. And understand what compilation to native means for performance and what it looks like. It's ironic The example humor. we have chosen is nBody.js. Some of you may be familiar with it. It is a part of a well-known computer language benchmarks game. 
Okay. It is a math-heavy benchmark. Do you think it's like the three-body problem? Famous novel, by the way. <laughs> by the way, citing that I read. Hey, just so you know, I read. I, I, I read. Not a big deal. With many property accesses. When we started compiling it to wow, native initially, it was the same performance as Hermes, and that is 550 milliseconds. But now, as you That's can a see, hell of a difference. it is 10 times faster when compiled natively. So that is, that is not pretty shabby. Plus, we're certain that there is more headroom. We can probably get to 20 times faster than Hermes. 20 times. <laughs> I would have loved to see something like V8 as well in this comparison, just so you can see... Um, like another engine. So you have something to compare to because it's Hermes against itself, meaning that it just got a lot faster. Has it caught up to standard JavaScript expectation speed or has it exceeded JavaScript expectation speed? I would have loved to see something outside of just Hermes comp uh, a comparison. You know, just toss it in no, toss it in bun, somewhere else, just so you can understand what you're looking at, you know? Okay. So we have this very nice performance improvement, but what does the compiled code look like? Uh, let's examine this loop from nbody.js. How did it be? The three body problem series is coming to coming in January 2024 to Netflix, by the way. Oh gosh, they have another opportunity to ruin a really great book. Damn. It comes so fast. Well, this is how. Before starting Hermes, there were dozens of instructions executed for every line of this loop by the interpreter. With Sati Hermes, it is much better. And by the way, I'm really happy to bring some low-level assembler to this JavaScript conference in the next slide. Uh, let's put the native in React Native. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are. Uh, if you don't know ARM64 assembler, don't worry. I think you will still get the idea. Uh, the first thing to see is how few assembler instructions we have for the first two lines of the loop. We have six instructions. And most importantly, most of these instructions are very cheap. The entire calculation, the two multiplications and the two adds. What, what's an F my life advanced mode on two dimensions? Is this some sort of sim D's nuts type operation going on here? What's this F my life going on right here? It's the divorce papers. It looks like it's doing two operations at once. Multiply and add. Floating multiply, lastly add that. Uh, all performed in parallel by a single instruction, which is marked with red. Divorce, there, which is really impressive. And trust me, this is very fast. And it is quite exciting for compiler developers. This is the rest of the loop. Again, very few instructions. Ooh, that, why is that one so Again, slow? Again, you don't need to understand the details of this, but you can see how small the output is. And rest assured, this is indeed very fast. It is achieving performance close to C, much faster than Hermes. I'd love, I, I would love to see, again, saying those phrases, I really wish they could have just tossed, tossed it quick into Godbolt and done a quick little look-see and see, like, what, what does that look like? What, what is the equivalent 03 awesome, you know, compiler version of this and, and look at that? Even done with it, it will become even faster. Sadly, I don't have do time to right explain now. how, but perhaps next year. But it'd be interesting. <laughs> when we hopefully would have shipped this. Now, a, little, a few more benchmarks. Uh, we can see the results of other benchmarks that we have created. They nice. are in the static Hermes repository. They're not as impressive, nice. but it's still not bad. One of them is like five times faster. And we're, again, we're still working on making them better. The I mean, this is all good. I love the performance ah, increase. The next thing I want to talk about is zero-cost FFI, which I suspect might be even more exciting for some of you. Come on, Zig. Uh, but what Come happened on. here? Come on, Zig. This was Zig. supposed to be a very serious slide. I don't know. <laughs> I shouldn't have used ChatGPT for this presentation. <laughs> Let's keep moving. So early on, when we started implementing sound typing, we got an unexpected benefit. We realized that sound types unlock the possibility of very efficient native platform integration. Yes. We can call native platform functions with practically no cost, just as if we were a C program. This enables us, if we wanted, to implement platform integrations entirely in JavaScript without the need for resorting to C++ at all.
That is incredible. And the reason... I can foresee some of the, the, the reasons why that is so dang incredible. Because especially with a moving target like a phone where the platform does make changes from time to time, what does FFI stand for? Fast Fourier intercourse. Um, with the platform moving, like various things change on the platform pretty regularly. And so being able to have a bridge methods written in JavaScript means that you can do like JavaScript operations and actually have like a platform normalization layer and it effectively gets to run at almost native speed like that that that's super cool that's like super super cool so what problem are we really solving here first native flutter native is sweating 20 billion dollars sweating and, prone, and they require a non-trivial amount of code in order to implement and wrap a single code to a native platform api Furthermore, those wrappers which use JSI can become expensive when they're invoked very frequently. We can give JavaScript developers another option. The zero-cost FFI in Hermes is literally that, zero cost. It performs no conversions, no allocations, no indirections. It is exactly as cheap as performing a regular library call in C++. We have measured that the call overhead is between 15 and 80 times, not percent, 80 times lower than JSI wow. when a native function. <laughs> wow. I mean, that's, that's pretty dang good. Even, I mean, I know it's all self-referential speed-up points that they keep doing, right? They're only referring to Hermes as what they've actually made faster. But nonetheless, I mean, making stuff faster within your own platform by huge leaps and bounds, like, that's really good. Like, that's genuinely an awesome thing, especially native calls like that where you can really get deep on it. I like it. However, we have to be careful. As we all know, native functions can be unsafe and dangerous. We have made it very cheap to call them, but that doesn't mean that they should be called irresponsibly. To ensure that, we have introduced a distinction between safe and unsafe code. This is very similar to another very popular system software language. I will let you guess which one it is. Uh, unsafe code sections trust that the developer knows what they are doing. Hopefully, Joe knows. We'll see. And <laughs> interacting with Whoopsies. I yeah. just accidentally, I tried the pause, safe, safe. I, just, I just messed that up. He's talking about Rust, okay? Rust mentioned, let's go. ...on the other hand, disallow unsafe operations, so you cannot accidentally call a native function from there. So you have to be very, really deliberate when interacting with... I, I skipped something, I'm not sure it, what happened here. Just deal it with it. Just deal with it. Uh, let's go, Squeal Light mentioned! your appetite for zero cost... Effect. By the way, Squeal Light is still so good. For those that don't know why Squeal Light is so good... I just want to let you know something. You can take Squealite and you can point it to a file. And it works. I want you just to take a second and think about how many cool integration tests you could have written by simply having golden database files. And you just write the database file once, save it as the file, and then that's the thing you test against now. You can actually, like, just test and have actual database, like, working, and the database is perfectly set up, and all you have to do is just, like, CP that file into a directory, run it, call it good, and you're like, yeah, that's exactly the thing we wanted to, to work. I know actual data, like, actual data. Squeal Light is really cool. Fine. I wanted to give you a taste of what is possible. You can do RAM only. In this oh, first example, RAM rod me. Uh, but the problem about RAM only is I, I don't know how the I don't know how the environment set up first, so that's why I just like the file thing, right? You can really do some cool stuff. We are accessing Data databases are always database up the entirely from FDL. JS. Uh, first, as you can see, uh, we need to declare some native APIs. Mm. These are the APIs mm. exported by SQLite. Mm. Now I did not write this by hand. Mm. It was generated by our tool which takes a C header and generates JavaScript bindings that we can use. And this is the JavaScript source that opens the database, queries it. Oh, gosh, guys, I know there's a lot of JavaScript engineers in here. Um, this, this is raw docking squeal, okay? Squeal for my boy! And I know this is, this, this is very hard to see. There's not even an ORM or at least a squeal builder, okay? I get it. I get that this is really hard to look at and you probably feel very scared. 
Okay, you're probably you're literally going to Prisma Chat and chatting with a live representative right now just to feel better about yourself. I, I understand, but trust me, it's okay. We can do this. It's just it's just it's just an example. Okay, it's okay. Where's my mongoose? Print the result, and this is it. This is the entire source. There's no C++. This Straight is it. This is what Eve. runs SQLite. And it actually does work. I was actually planning to do this in a live demo, but I got discouraged after I saw what Microsoft did yesterday. <laughs> I couldn't compare with that, so here's a screenshot. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. Just you, can see, <laughs> you can see this is invoking starting Hermes to compile the demo <laughs> on the Mac OS. Imagine being... Whatever, what, whatever, whatever Microsoft did ruined the guy. This is such a good presentation. I would love to see whatever this is. Command line. Yeah, just showing you the output. It is a true. Wait, is the thing called Shermies? What the hell's Shermies? Is Shermies the compiler? Use Shermies to compile for Hermes. Please tell me that's real. Mac OS binary, and we're running it. Static it Hermes. Oh, okay. I don't know how I didn't see that coming. So, as you can see, you could even use Static Hermes if you wanted to, to write uh, native applications for Mac OS or Linux or Windows. Oh, my goodness. Uh, although we go. do not recommend it. But I find it amusing that it is possible. <laughs> <laughs> JavaScript devs don't even raw dog JavaScript. Imagine looking at Squeal. Yeah, I can imagine that. Okay, this second example will be a little bit more boring, but I hope it will allow you to Ooh, understand a that. little bit more what is going on here. Uh, we have deliberately chosen a very simple native API for demonstration purposes. It is the cgetenv function. Everyone's which favorite. an environment variable by name. Uh, think process.env in Node.js. Again, observe that this is all JavaScript. There is no C++, JSI, or anything like that here. And we're not going to spend a lot of time on this, but let's quickly go over what is happening. First, this is the external declaration that we're going to call. This is telling static Hermes of the C function that we want to call. That's gross here, looking. we're converting the name of the variable that we want to take from a JavaScript string to a C string. OK. Here, we are calling the native function. OK. Then we're converting the result to a JavaScript string. Well, and we're what's that 2048? Is 2048 like the max value? Did, are we just, did he just, did he literally just go over a quick two to the 11? Just, just allowing a two to the 11 hang out like that buff size? I know, but that's what I mean. You can't just, you can't just gloss over the fact that you're, I don't know how I feel about people playing with buffers and thinking about stir end copy. In JavaScript, okay? It makes me feel a little nervous all of a sudden. Freeing the temporary buffer that we needed. Then you got to free it? I know. This very is simple, very logical. Although, you should only do this in libraries. You should not do this in product code, obviously. <laughs> and here, I would like us to examine a little bit oh, closer no, I trust how any to of declare this. the external variable, uh, the external function call. And I promise you, this is actually the end. <laughs> There's not a lot more. Uh, first, we have a place where we can put options. Things like calling convention, platform dependent things. Mm. It is an object, open ended, where we can use it to add functionality. This is where we specify the name of the native function we're importing. We describe the types of its parameters. Like you can just say C pointer. We describe the return type. That's nice. And this is just a throwaway body that we need to populate in order to make the type check. I want to know what Microsoft did. So I know, I do uh, too. Since this is an external function, but it's still passing through the to TypeScript and Flow, we just throw a dummy exception so that it doesn't complain that we're not returning a result. Mm. So yeah, this is it. Uh, for questions or suggestions, I'm highly encouraging you to use the discussions tab on the. I Hermes really want to play around with this. I really want to play out with, play around with some Shermies, right? I think Shermies is really exciting. I love this idea. Like I said, I, I've been super excited about all of this. Um, I, I really do think that this is the much more interesting version, right, of of a runtime than anything else. I, th I feel like this is the first real iteration in JavaScript in any sort of way in app, just in years upon years. Obviously, V8's like this slow iteration where they said, hey, we could make a better engine. Hey, we're going to add in JIT. JIT was really important. And then really some of their different uh, uh, garbage collection stuff really made a big a big difference. But this, I think, is like the next big step, which is like, well, we have to kind of get out of this interpreted world if you actually want to see it move fast. Now you're actually starting to get into speeds that are probably a lot, a lot, a lot better. And so this, to me, is just extremely exciting. Love the idea.
Awesome presentation. Shermie's for everybody. Did Bun just get toasted? I don't know. But the name is the Shermie's a gen. Shermie's a gen. Shermie's a gen.